So I think that's all of our member agencies that we were uh, expecting to have, have participate in here. We have, uh, I'm gonna go through, a, just because we're in a virtual meeting and a hearing with uh, New York State requirements here, I'm just gonna go through a roll call of organizations and uh, you can identify if you're here from that organization and if you are the voting member or not, please say so. The Central New York Regional Planning and Development Board. Here. Central New York Regional Transit Authority. Here. City of Syracuse. Here. New York State DOT. Here. Uh, Dave, are you the voting member today? Uh, I thought John would be today. Okay, John, are you gonna be the voting member? All right. So, he doesn't say yes, it's going to be you, Dave. I He's got on. What do I do? He's I on that. mute. <laughs> All right. And the Onondaga County DOT, we have... Uh, I'm here, Jim. Uh, Odin and I are here. Welcome, guys. Chris is somewhere. I don't know. And then Sokba. Dan said he was going to join us, but I don't think he's called in yet. Okay, so welcome. Uh, for us from SMTC, you have myself and... Um, for you, those of you who don't know, Patricia Wortley has moved on to become the business manager for the Central New York Regional Planning and Development Board. So she is no longer here, serving in her function that she served in for almost 20 years. Um, so uh, pinch hitting for her, uh, Lori Irvine is our new administrative assistant, but since this is literally her second day on the job, I had Danielle kind of uh, mentoring her on what is required for her to have to do uh, in, in, in her role here. And Mario Colon, who you all know, was. Uh, always joins us on these meetings. That being said, Mary, the agenda yeah. is yours. Laura Levine, Laura Irvin. Okay, do we have any additions or changes to the agenda? Nothing's come to me. Okay, we have the May 7th, 2020 uh, meeting minutes. Has everyone read them and does anybody have any um, revisions to the, to the minutes? Hearing none, can I have a motion to approve the minutes? I'll move. Right. Uh, second. I'll second them, Mary. Any further discussion? Hey, Dan. Hey, how are you? Good. Welcome, Dan. We're just in the process of approving the minutes from the May 7th, 2020 right. meeting. Uh, Jim, do you have to do a roll call for approval, or do we all do I? I uh, no, you can just do I for this. Is, um, you can wait until we get down to anything that actually is uh, going to require an active action for that, and that'll be the uh, tip of the minutes. All right. All in favor of approving the minutes, aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. The minutes are approved. Next, we have communications and reports, financial statements from April 2020. Yep, attached to see at the April 2020 statements. Um, you'll also notice that they say April and it's July. Uh, that's because we are a little bit behind on our financials because uh, there was a turnover in the business manager position at the Regional Planning Board. We're always one month behind in the financials as that, just the way that accounting and reconciliation occurs. But we're a little bit more behind right now as there's a transition process going on board. I anticipate that that transition process will uh, catch up in the near future and um, we'll be back to our normal schedule. In terms of the April financials that you see in front of you, uh, it was the first full month of uh, working from home from the, for the SMTC as well as the first full month of our new program. So all in all, I think it actually was a success. We are not over budget, um, we are on budget. Priorities got a little shifted because of um, the whole uh, working from home thing, but we, we figured it all out. Um, we had to rejuggle some of the priorities that we thought we were going to do when and where during the year. And we have a few un unanticipated expenses like the Zoom subscription that we're using now, uh, expenses on PPE, but every, all of our members have had the same kind of expenses we've been going through. Um, the only other notable expense on, their, on the financials that's out of the ordinary is the payment for the 2019 audit uh, for SMTC's portion to our host agency, uh, our host agency's audit of which we are a component of. But all in all, the financials look fine. I assume we'll be back in the regular order of being one month behind in the near future. David, I don't know if you want to say anything on the, your, your new business manager's behalf. 
Well, Pat Wortley is our new business manager, and uh, you know she had the benefit of, of, of a few weeks of training from um, the former business manager Janet Newman. But it's going to take um, you know it's going to take a couple months to get everything up to speed, but. We're making progress. Pat's making progress. Um, stay tuned. Thank you. That's it for financials. Any questions on the financials? All right, we'll move on to the UPWP status report. Yep, I'll just uh, highlight the items that are of, uh, of, of note here. Uh, under general administration, the SMTC's offices opened up on the limited capacity in June, middle of June. Um, we are still allowing staff who choose to to work from home. So we're generally running at about a quarter to a third of the office on any given day. Um, I'm here every day. Um, Andrew Frazier is here every day. Um, Lori, our new administrative assistant, is going to be here every day. And a couple of the staff are working a few days from the office and a few days from home. And a couple of staff are working exclusively from home for a variety of uh, reasons. Um, I, continue to, I anticipate that that will continue until our situation down changes substantively out there. The only, other, the only other big thing under administration is uh, our new administrative assistant and she'll be uh, taking control of this process uh, next month. Under public participation we've continued our public outreach efforts for our long-range transportation plan. We had to migrate those to an entirely virtual process um, of which the feds are asking us a lot of questions, but offering no uh, input on, which is normal for dealing with federal highway and federal transit. They are highly critical of what we're doing, but offering no suggestions as to how to do things differently. Um, for example, our long-range transportation plan, we have to have a full public meeting as part of the adoption process. We're going to do that virtually, probably on YouTube, um, with a presentation and some kind of feedback mechanism through YouTube and other social media, as well as through email. Um, and they are not convinced that that is a valid approach at the Federal Transit Authority, but they're offering us no um, alternatives that they do see are more valid than the, than the one we're proposing. So we're just gonna go ahead and assume what we're doing is fine because it has to be in the current environment that we're operating in. Um, additionally, under public participation, you probably all received our LRT newsletter that went out in the mail as well as email. That was part of our public outreach process, as well as having a uh, website that is now, has since come down that allowed people to play with various financial options for our long range transportation plan in terms of reprioritizing how our investments are made. And um, this one was called Balancing App was the name of the software and it allowed people to do their own financial scenarios instead of the one that we are proposing in our plan to see how it would impact the community. Um, under federal transportation legislation, um, I'd like to say no news is good news, but in this case, it's, it's really not. There's been no movement on new legislation for federal transportation. Not surprising. It's an election year. Notoriously, people don't get along well in an election year. So that means we're probably looking at extensions of the existing bill until um, the new administration or the current administration is renewed. Um, but at the moment, we're expecting uh, an extension, but, you know, it, if an extension does not come, you'll hear it from us because that will impact everybody and all of the projects on, that are ongoing right now. Under uh, UPWP closeouts, we have a bunch of projects that we wrapped up for adoption in our next planning and policy committee. Those are scheduled, we're going to be scheduling our planning committee for August and our policy committee for September. So Mary, I'll be reaching out to you shortly to give me some dates for uh, planning committee for August since you are currently the chair. Uh, but one of the items on the agenda will be the election of chair for that committee if you want to get out of it that'll be the time to do it <laughs> um, so we, we uh, for adoption coming up we're going to have the long-range transportation plan the Fayetteville get the getty study the regional market study the city of syracuse sidewalk prioritization the sister road 11 study city of syracuse pavement prioritization and the bridge and pay, the bridge and pavement report amongst other things so we have quite a slew of things that we've been working on during the shutdown that are actually completed and ready for action by our committees the conference that we were going to host here locally in 2021 has been moved to 2022 for the New York State MPO Association for obvious reasons that conferences are not really a good idea to be planning for right now. So we're hoping by 2022, perhaps the world will be a little bit more open-minded to such things. 
Um, for data collection, we have our interns in our field doing a variety of data collection work. A lot of it is spending time doing uh, about four hours every day doing City of Syracuse sidewalk rating data collection as a pilot project on behalf of the City of Syracuse. I have a team out there every day, um, usually in the mornings when it's uh, less activity on the streets as well as less hot. And they're literally walking all of the streets in the City of Syracuse in a methodical fashion in a pilot program. We will absolutely not complete that project this summer. Uh, we are doing it the more as a proof of concept to the city of Syracuse and BPW that, that, that it can be done, developing a way for it to be done, a technology basis to use GPS and iPads to collect the data correctly and uh, electronically tie it to the GIS for them automatically. The process is working exactly as we had planned. It's actually a pretty cool, neat process that is uh, very low investment and very high um, quality product. Problem is that there's a lot of sidewalks in the city to walk. So it's taking a very long time. Originally, when we were gonna do this, I was gonna have a couple of interns who were gonna supervise a bunch of people that the city of Syracuse hired to, to do most of the work. The city of Syracuse did not retain their people because of the current situation. So we just have our folks doing it out there as a proof of concept to turn over to the city. So the next year, the city of Syracuse can hopefully hire their own people to complete the process. Or they can come back to us and ask us to, and I can try and hire more if they, if they want to go that way. But with the staff I have on this summer, I can only get done a couple of the city's neighborhoods. They won't be able to, to do a substantial portion of the city. But we will have um, proof of concept that it can be done very effectively. Jim, are, yes. you, are they looking at the ADA? Um, they're evaluating it for like cracks and deformities cracks. as well as ADA or what? Correct. There, there's a whole evaluation, a bunch of criteria that they went over with Neil. Um, and BPW to come up with uh, a bunch of rating factors that they, they look at, ADA compliance, material, cracking, um, is it wide enough, those kind of things. And it's a whole form they fill out as they walk, and it's filled out on the parcel level. So the entire sidewalk is rated for a single parcel. So it's not rated by linear feet, it's rated by parcel. That's gotta be pretty uh, slow. It is slow. My son is one of the interns, I'll, and I'll be very open about that. He's one of the guys out there. He, uh, he complains about it every night at dinner. So it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, very, it's very hot. It's been a very hot summer to be out there. Yes, walking, it has. To walk in the city streets. The, the iPads do overheat after about four hours in the sun, so we have to shut them down and then bring them back to the office to cool down and recharge. Apparently four hours is about all you want to have an iPad and direct sunlight on pavement for before they start to overheat. That's what we so it's a learning process. <laughs> Do they take pictures as part of that? Uh, for this one, no. The, the pavement one they take that is, includes photographs. They're not taking pictures of all the sidewalks as they go. Okay. That would be too much. Yeah. Got it. Um, let's see. Bicycle and pedestrian planning. Our final bike map is uh, going to the printers as we speak. A digital version of it is actually on our website. I think today Mario put it up on our website, either last night or this morning, I forget which. Um, but it's available up there if you want to see our, our 2020 bike map. Uh, it's at the printers now, it will be delivered this month or early August, and will be available to all of our member agencies and to the general public. It is always the most requested item we create. It is a very nice item uh, to have, and it's a nice update that we went through. Um, I think it looks pretty good. So if you want to check it out, it's on our website. Um, bridge and pavement condition management system. We are going to be rating the city of Syracuse streets this summer, along with Onondaga County streets again this summer, and the local federal aid eligible streets. Um, so for the city of Syracuse, we do all of your streets as per uh, agreement with DPW. For the Onondaga County, we do all the federal aid eligible streets, and same for the local federal aid eligible. New York State traditionally rates their own. Um, we have, do have a problem that's been ongoing, which is the New York State DOT has not provided any data to us since the 2017 pavement data set. This has been an ongoing issue. I raised it with uh, Maine Office, New York State DOT. Um, they, have, they will not give me any indication of when they will give us updated data for that, but it does put a giant hole in our infrastructure management system that we're supposed to be maintaining. We're supposed to be funding projects based on project need and the largest owner of our system is not providing the data sets and does not want us to collect them in lieu of them doing it themselves. So it's going to create a problem for the next tip cycle if we don't uh, address that sooner. 
Under uh, regional planning activities, SMTC uh, continues to create maps for the uh, Empire State Trail Economic Opportunities Plan for South and the Regional Planning Board. We've also been working with New York State DOT and South and the Town of Skinny Atlas on some concerns for a paving project in the Town of Skinny Atlas and some improvements the town would like to see and the town is working with them on that. I mentioned the Long Range Transportation Plan. Um, the uh, Route 11 corridor studies going to planning and policy. The safety assessment project for Onondaga County is completed and going to planning and policy. We are having some final conversations with Chris Robert on that to wrap it up for Onondaga County DOT. Trying to get that wrapped up this week or early next for any concerns that are outstanding on that. Um, the joint TMC co-location project, that one is one of the ones that has not had significant movement um, in light of the new paradigm in which we're operating it. But I will say related to that, we have been working with the city on getting their existing TMC operational, getting a uh, consultant retained to help them with an RFP process and a consultant selection process. I don't know if they're in the process of retaining that uh, consultant or if they're still, uh, I don't know, Mary, if you know anything more about that than we do. But we sat through a couple of consultant selection processes with the city. I am not involved in that selection process. I haven't gotten an update, sorry. I don't know if that's fine. Um, the dome traffic management uh, study, that is a large consultant project. We have a scope of work that has been completed for that project. It's gone to the planning committee, received no comments back on it. So we're going to be moving ahead and releasing an RFP for that in the very near future and go through a formal consultant selection process. The Tuscarora Road project um, has the kind of scope that's gone through an approval process as well as the Route 11 Maddingdale project. Man Manliest Village Center project is uh, still being scoped. That should be scoped by the end of this month. The Village of Skinny Atlas Pedestrian and Safety Project has been scoped at the planning committee level. Um, I mentioned I've already talked about the Syracuse sidewalk planning effort. Uh, Syracuse school loading study. Um, that project is being delayed intentionally given the nature of school issues as it relates to COVID-19. We figure that schools have other things to do rather than talk to us right now, so we're leaving them alone. Our travel demand model has been updated extensively for the long range transportation plan and that has been used successfully for that. I want to remind all of our members that that tool is available to you. It's just gone through a, another update. So if you have any land use or economic things you'd like us to test with our model, give us a call. We'll see if it's an appropriate use of it. And we'd love to use it to show you uh, what it can do and how it can help us un understand impacts to our community. And for the tip, we held a CPC meeting and uh, earlier this month, everything is on surprisingly on track considering that it's a pandemic environment. We thought we'd have a lot harder time being able to keep our projects going, but our members are doing an excellent job of moving their projects forward. So we expect to come close to using all of our funds again this year. So as long as everything uh, continues as, as it seems to be. So that's it for um, project updates. If I didn't talk about the project you care about, please let me know. Any questions? All right. No old business, so we'll move on to 5A tip amendments. Yep. Uh, so we have four tip amendments before us today. We have uh, three different types, and they're from two different sponsors, the City of Syracuse and New York State DOT. The first is in addition to the program, um, this is a New York State DOT run process, but they're not New York State DOT projects. They are um, 5310 solicitation administered by the New York State DOT. We have three applications in Onondaga County. Uh, Loretto Independent Services purchased six accessible, six accessible vehicles for um, $450,000. <clears> St. <throat> Camillus Residential Facility for the purchase of two accessible vehicles for $137,000. Onondaga County Department of Long-Term Care Services operating assistance to several nonprofit agencies at over $600,000. So those are all of the additions to the program. Uh, next set of tip, tip amendment is for changes in cost. Those are for New York State DOT. We have replaced regional culverts. Uh, New York State DOT is proposing to add additional funding to the detailed design and right away acquisition phases for the fiscal year 1920 utilizing 80,000 in MHPP and 44,000 in STBG, STBG Urban. 
and increase construction phases for 2021 by um, 1,333,000 NHPP, as well as 134,000 in inspection. Offset is being provided by the Regional Retaining Wall Project, and that project will be moving off of the current tip step cycle into the out years for the next cycle. What does F SDF stand for? You sent a revised resolution. Yeah. It's for state dedicated funds. I usually write local. Like if it was for, the, if you were moving a project that had a phase off and had the city, I would just write local. Same for the county, but for the state, instead of local, it's called state dedicated funds. Okay. That's what SDF stands for. So it would be reconsidered as part of the next tip cycle. Yeah, same thing we do with the city or county project. When we move them into an out year where we don't have federal funding for, we write them down as local funding and then consider them for federal funding as part of the next cycle. Okay. We can't technically allocate federal funding to them in the next cycle yet because we don't have any allocations to allocate from. Uh, third is changes to schedule the Onondaga Lake Parkway safety project. A New York State DOT is proposing to um, Add funds to the preliminary design for the 1920, utilizing uh, $831,000 of uh, highway safety improvement funds, and to delay the detailed design phase from 1920 to 21, the offset being provided by the, uh, pushing off that one phase, and uh, using the construction phases to then fund the detailed design of the uh, 2021 year. Fourth and last project is the City of Syracuse Creek Walk Improvement and Bridge Walk Maintenance Project. Proposing to delay the right of way acquisition from 1920 to 2021, since that is uh, using um, what is it? Tap, tap funds, Mario, or tap funds? That yeah, that's tap, uh, yeah tap, that's tap funding. Tap funding. Now, no offset is necessary because of that. So those are the four tip amendments. If anyone has any questions, our sponsors are all here to ask. On the Onondaga Lake Parkway project, we greatly are increasing the uh, preliminary design based on probably public comments, but I don't see any increase in the detailed design. Do they feel, does the state feel additional money is gonna be needed for detailed design phase? I'm gonna let the John or Dave answer that. You there, John? Oh, okay, well, um, anyway, this time, no. Um, this is to cover cover an increased cost for the preliminary design. Okay. Other questions? Can we do one motion for all four? Yep, we can do one motion for all four, but I will have to do a roll call for voting. Okay. Can I have a motion to approve these four TIP amendments? Ryan makes a motion. Second. There's a lot. Odin will second. All right. Thank Odin you. will second. Any further discussion? Okay. Roll call. Uh, CMYR PDB. Yes. CNYRTA? Yes. City of Syracuse? Yes. New York State DOT? I don't hear John, but so I guess that's me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Onondaga County DOT? Yes. And Sakwa? Yes. All right. Thank you. So, Mary, you'll have to sign those and either deliver me visually or in person as you see fit. Okay, I'll do that. Um, any other new business? You have other to be determined? Oh, I wasn't sure. I just, I just put that there in case uh, there, there was okay. anything that, I mean, that came up. So it was just, I, I, I do not have any. Okay. Do we have any public comment? Any public people on the line? No, nope, we are not. This call is not open to the public, but it is being oh. recorded. And as soon as this call is over, it is being posted um, for, for public review. And then the, 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 if any comments come in, I'll share them with the group accordingly. The planning and policy committee meetings are live streamed, so we can have live comment for those. I don't do that for these meetings. Okay. They're small, they're smaller. Sounds good. Anybody have any other questions, comments, concerns? 
All right. Can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Brian, second. Dave? Yep. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, everyone. Sorry I can't have lunch uh, virtually like we normally can. <laughs>